Right now you're watching Lab 2 Part 2, and what it says here is to copy this link. So we're just going to right mouse click and copy the link. Now when we go to try and clone this, there's nothing here that says clone anymore. So what we have to do is go up to File from now on and go down to Clone. Once we're here, we're just going to paste the link here. And right now it says lab 2 a underscore embed OS2. So it tells us it's OS2, but there's other ways to tell. And it's going to make this the active project. So when we say add project, this will no longer be bolded. This will be. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this main and go down here when we open this up and see the main code that we're actually running here. And there it is. Now it says here it's going to take characters from the keyboard and continually send them to the screen. And we do have the ability to use ANSI escape sequences to position the cursor, clear the screen, change the foreground and colors of the screen as we go through, as we'll see. We can see in our code we've got include embed.h. We have an unsigned char input character, and we have a forever loop here which it can't get out of. And what we're doing in the loop is we're getting a character from standard in. Standard in is our keyboard, and we're putting it into variable input. Inside here, we're checking to see if input is equal to 0x0d, which is your enter key or return key on a Mac. And if it is, we're going to put out a line feed to standard out, and standard out is our screen. So basically, it's getting a character from the keyboard, putting it on the screen continually. I've commented this out here because we don't know at this point, do we really need to echo the character from the keyboard to the screen right away, or is it going to do that automatically? Also, we've included an F flush standard out here just in case we need it, but we may not need it, and we're going to modify this code when we're finished to make sure it's the absolute minimal amount of code. Now, what we've done here is I've already set up the build target and connected device, and I'm just going to hit the arrow here to run it. Now it says it's running, but I have to go over here now, and under Freedom K64, which is our serial monitor, I'm going to set that to 9600 baud. Now I'm going to click here, but as we saw before, we can right mouse click and say toggle maximize and see it on a bigger screen. And I have to make sure I click to make sure that it starts allowing me to type hi there, how are you, question mark, enter. It seems to work perfectly as a typewriter. I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to toggle maximize again, which means we don't really need this to echo characters so we can get rid of this code here. And one other thing we want to check to see, do we really need the F flush? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment it out and I'm going to go back here to the big S and then run the code again to see if it's going to make any difference. If it doesn't make any difference, then we don't need it. Right now it says that it's running, so we're just going to go to freedom here and I'm going to start typing it again. Hi there, how are you? And again, we don't seem to need it, so let's get rid of the stuff that we don't need by just getting rid of this line here. And this is the code that we need here to actually put characters on the screen from the keyboard. Another thing in this loop we can see, it says if input equals equals 0x0d, which is our enter key, it's going to put out a line feed. So carry to turn puts us back to the start of the same line, and a line feed moves us down. So 0x0d is our enter key, and our line feed key is a 0x0a. Now if we go back to lab 2, page 2, it asks us some questions. It says standard in represents the PC keyboard, standard out represents the PC screen. Pressing the enter key generates a hex value, 0x0d, which is 13 in decimal. And it also asks how many active projects can you have at one time in Kyle Studio Cloud, and I think it should be pretty obvious we can only have one. Now it says here most operating systems will take an enter or key or a return key. So on the PC it's an enter key, on the Mac it's a return key, and it's going to generate a 0x0d. And it has to send a line feed as well to move you back to the start of a new line. And so basically a backslash n, when you have it in your code when you say hello world backslash n, it's going to do a carriage return plus a line feed. Now one of the things it's going to ask us to do is after typing in some characters, Hit the escape key, which is at the top left of your keyboard, then left square bracket to and capital J. And let's see what's going to happen when we do that. Now let's toggle maximized our output screen. Right mouse click, toggle maximized. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put another couple lines of code. How oh, and nothing is happening until I click. How oh, are you? Now if I move using the up arrow key on my keyboard, I can say escape left square bracket 1, and then shift J, and it clears from the cursor to the top. Escape left square bracket 0J, and it clears from the bottom. And if I have a whole bunch of stuff on my screen, anytime escape left square bracket 2, shift J, will clear the entire screen. Now if you remember, escape left square bracket 2J, what does it do? Characters you typed in the entire screen is cleared as it says here. 
with k plus square back of 1j clears from the cursor to the top and 0j from the cursor to the bottom. For most serial terminal programs, such as putty, teraterm, hyperterminal, and so on, the default screen size is 24 rows by 80 columns. And the ANSI escape sequence, escape plus square back of 12, semicolon 40, capital H, positions you on row 12, column 40, which is in the middle of such a terminal screen. However, the serial monitor that's built into Kyle Studio Cloud allows you with the mouse to make the screen size any size you want. And so for the purpose of this lab, we'll assume the standard 24 by 80 column layout, which is used by most serial terminal programs. Okay, plus square bracket one, semicolon one, capital H. It positions us in the top left corner. If I say escape plus square bracket 12, semicolon 40, capillation, you'll notice nothing again is happening until I hit the last character and nothing is showing on the screen. This is row 12, column 40. So we can position it just about anywhere we like on the screen. And we've got a screen that can be resized to any size you want, huge, small, whatever. And so it's not a standard size. Now as it shows on page three of lab two, if you have that standard 80 column screen, what you can do is figure out how to center text. For instance, if we have this name like Donald Duck, it needs the same number of spaces to the left as it needs to the right to actually be centered. If we let that number of spaces be x, then x plus x or 2x plus the number of characters here is going to equal the number of columns on the screen. So if you have an 80 column screen, this will work. And it shows you that it would be escape left square bracket 12, which is the middle row here on a 24 by 80 column screen. And 35 is just a little less than half. And when you type Donald duck it wouldn't be actually centered. Now if you want to use this for a larger screen size because as I mentioned uh, the serial monitor can be any size you want so if you know what the number is here you can do the same calculation figure out exactly where to position it so that whatever text you put up will be centered on the screen that you've got. Now part 12 says to copy this link so we're just going to right mouse click and copy the link and then we're going to again use file clone. Then we'll have to right mouse click here toggle maximize to get back to our regular screen. And at this point, we can then go up to here again, File, Clone, and paste in our new project here. And it says Lab 2A Embed OS 5. And so if we add this, this will be ghosted. And the only one highlighted will be the new one. Let's just close these up to make a little bit more room. And again, what we want to do is get rid of this main and open up this and put the main that we've got up here. Now, it's going to do exactly the same thing but it's going to use embed OS 5 instead of embed OS 2. And if you remember, we don't need this. We get rid of that. And we definitely don't need the F flush. Let's get rid of that. So this is a code that we need here. Now, one of the things you're going to find is that when we do this and we say FR again to do this and set up our target again to be Freedom K64, one of the things that we do have the ability to do this time is to actually debug our code. So what we're going to do is, right now it says unsigned chart input. And the way things work is that this is fine for a PC because it has lots of RAM, but for microcontrollers they don't have very much RAM. So to actually look at variables the way you would see them on a PC, you have to add this one word called volatile in front of it so we can actually see it working properly when we start doing our debug. Now notice up here it says experimental, and there are some things that you should do, and I'll mention that as we go through. So we're just going to hit this and we're going to compile it. And then it's going to make it come up over here in our debug screen, which is this guy here. It's going to switch right to our debug screen. So it says it's running and it's not running until you actually see an arrow up here. So there's our arrow and we're in the debug screen. And I go back here while this is doing its thing. And I go back here and change this back to 9600 to get a new screen here. And we can also go back to debug to see what's going on. Now, if we look up here, this is our old program here, Hello World. And the problem that you run into is sometimes if this happens, if something strange happens where it's trying to debug something you've done before, the only thing you can do is get out of this, go to help, log out, get back in, and everything will work properly. And so just getting out and getting back in quickly will solve about 99.99% of your issues. So again, it's going to come up here with this. It's loading the target. Everything's good. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hit the debug again. And this time it should work perfectly. And again, it's going to say it's running. Here we go. Again, we're going to get the arrow up here. This time we're going to be troubleshooting our particular code here. Now let's just make sure we've got our serial monitor set up. So I'm just going to check here. We're going to set that back to 9600 and go back to our debug.
So as we trace through this, it's going to say input equals get C. Now at this point, we definitely have to have the serial monitor open because it's going to get something from our keyboard. So if I trace ahead, it's waiting for me to click here and type something in. So I'm going to type a capital letter J. And right now it says input by default is a zero, which is a null. And we go ahead and it's going to show us that there's our capital J. And right now it says if it's 0x0d, which is 13 decimal, it's 74 decimal, it's not. So it's just going to go on and go back to the input. Uh, every time I hit this and this goes, it's waiting for me to type in a new character. And this time I'm going to hit the enter key. And when we trace ahead, our enter key is a 13, which is a 0x0d. And right now the cursor is sitting here. And if I trace ahead, it's going to now put a 0x0a, which is a line feed. And when it does, it moves it to the start of the next line. Now some of the questions that it's asking in number 12 here is what version of embed OS are you running? When you hit the enter key, it generates what hex value, what other hex value must be sent to the screen. And after a printout, which we don't happen to have in this code, you must also issue what kind of instruction. Let's go back and take a look. So basically what we've got here is you can tell that it's embed OS 5, and that's going to be showing up under embed libraries as well if we click here. And uh, one thing that you'll notice here, the difference between embed OS 2 and embed OS 5 is embed OS 5 allows you to do debugging. And, but it's exactly the same code as we had for embed OS 2. So when we go back here, it's running embed OS 5. The enter key generates a 0x0d. We have to put in a 0x0a, and you have to have an f flush. On number 13, it says copy this link. It's going to ask you similar questions. It's going to say, what is the version of embed OS being used in this project and some other things? So let's just right mouse click. Let's copy this link. Let's go up here to file, clone. Let's paste in our value here. And it says, even tells us embed OS 6, big surprise. And we'll see what the difference is here. Again, we're going to close this up. And again, this is the only thing highlighted. What we want to do is get rid of this main and bring up this main. Now you see that there's some differences here. Again, what we're going to have to do to check the variable is put in the word volatile. Input equals get C standard in, get it from the keyboard. But this time it's checking for a line feeder of 0x0a. And if it does, we're going to put that same value 0x0a back on the screen and f flush standard out. Now I think you'll find that we can get rid of this f flush standard out because that's only really used after print apps. What I've done to this point is just added our build target and connected our device. But if you remember, if we really want to do debug, what we have to do is to be sure, log out, log back in again, at this point, we should be able to hit the debug project and have no problems. And again, we have to wait until this is an arrow. Now, at this point, we also should go back to the big S and make sure we've got our serial monitor set to 9600 baud, and it's open here. And again, let's go back to debug, and let's start tracing. So if we trace through here, it's going to say input is going to be some default value. If we hit this, it's going to say wait for a character. Again, we have to click in here. Let's put a capital X. And if we go step ahead now, you see the capital X is an 88 decimal, which is not a 0x0a. So what it's going to do is it's going to go back up here. Now when we click here and again these ghosts, it's waiting for input. I'm going to hit an enter key. And this time what we're going to see is that the enter key is a 10, which is a 0x0a. And then it's going to echo the 0x0a again. And that's what's going to, when we do this, put us on the next line. What version of embed are we running? We're running embed OS 6. The difference between embed OS 2, 5, and 6 is that you cannot debug with embed OS 2. When you debug this code, which hex value is generated by the enter key, 0x, 0a, or 10 decimal.